this is where I want to go through and obviously potentially take those maintenance requests and then schedule them, right? I'm going to actually take those and then generate a work order and then have resources that I may then dispatch to go through that particular process. I want to schedule downtime potentially because maybe those resources or those assets that are going to be on that particular maintenance work order um, are going to affect production processing as part of that. So I want to be able to schedule that as well. And then I want to be able to, uh, to generate, for example, um, work orders from maintenance plans as part of that process to be able to really drive then the work that I'm going to be doing inside of Dynamics. So if we go ahead and look now at that in a little bit more detail, we have a work order that was generated for this asset failure that you have, that we have. If I click on that work order to bring it up, I'm able to see some additional detail about it. So if I had any images that were on there, I could actually attach those. If I had any fault information, I could actually access access that as well. But really what I can do here is I can do a, a couple of different things to, to continue to process this. Now, one would be that I actually go through and update the state of this, right? So I actually go through and then I say, for example, that I'm ready for this to be scheduled or dispatched as part of my process. So what I could do as a manager of this work order is I could click on, for example, the schedule-based capabilities, and then I could have the system go through and look at those rules that we set up for the asset, for the tool, and for the worker to basically align then, for example, what resource is going to be used to do this particular repair. So just like we talked about the asset and the attributes um, that may be needed then, and the trade as well from the worker perspective on what may be needed to go through and do this, well, I can use the system to schedule this and it will automatically then find those resources and attach them. Now, another option though, is to actually use what we call the dispatch capability. And that's where people are more like, I, I control the schedule. I don't want the system controlling it. I wanna be able to select who I want to assign this to basically, as opposed to actually going through and using the system, look at all those additional details. So in this example, for I can actually go through and then specify the worker as Ted Howard inside of here, and then click on okay to it. And what that's going to do is that's going to then schedule work now for Ted Howard to go through and do his processing of that particular work order then inside of the system. Now, the nice thing about this is the fact now that if we actually even go back to the mobile-based capabilities that are inside of here, we also have the ability, for example, to actually see work orders that are out here that are assigned to you. So if you actually do have, for example, a work order list that you have assignment against, instead of actually doing it from the web interface inside of here, we can actually then do it through, for example, the work order job list, so it can actually show you you all the work orders that you need to work on to be able to enter in information on you know reporting for example what you repaired what was the materials that you used how many hours did you spend on it so on and so forth all from the mobile based capabilities but you can also then use a web browser if you wanted to as well and in this web browser we can for example go ahead and create for example purchase orders from this or requisitions where purchasing has to actually go through and then authorize it we can also generate for example production orders Orders. So if we actually need to be able to do a repair and we need to create the part to do the repair, well, we could actually theoretically generate a production order to schedule that as part of that process. So a lot of great capabilities then from a work order perspective as we go through and process this. Now, eventually here, what's going to happen is we're going to take that particular work order and we're basically going to be updating um, really the, the work order state, as we call it. And these states are configured so that you can have different statuses basically with work orders. Is it released? Is it scheduled? Um, is it in progress, for example, as part of it? So you can basically go through and then specify what those work order states are going to be so that you can really track then what that next step is as you go through your work order processing inside of here. So this allows you really to group those as part of your processing um, very effectively and efficiently then inside of Dynamics um, really as part of your processing. So. With that, um, one last area I just wanna kind of highlight inside of here. So obviously we can go through and then update all those different types of work order states. We could say, for example, that this is in progress at this point and we can start the date with it. Um, we can go ahead and then enter in additional information. So if I want to, for example, 
go ahead and enter in how much time I spent on it. I can actually come in here and say I was doing that repair. Um, I can specify it was me, Ted Howard, as the resource if I wanted to as well. And then I could specify the amount of time that I spent on it. So maybe it was two hours and the resource, for example, was, was Ted that went through and did that processing for it to be able to do that. I can also then do, for example, items. I can say, here are the items I consumed for this particular work order or the expense as well. So maybe I had to run to Menards or Fleet Farm uh, to pick something up to be able to do that repair. And I wanna reflect that as an expense on here as opposed to an item in hours with it. And what I can do then is I can take this and then post this as part of my process to then reflect obviously that cost that went into it as part of that repair that I was doing as part of that. So it allows you really to, to drive all of that. Couple other features I just wanna highlight inside of here. So this copy from forecast, I've had this asked a couple of times where you just want the defaults to pop into here as part of that. Well, what you can do is you can use this copy from core forecast. So that way what was defaulted on that particular work order, for example, for the number of hours that was considered will actually go through and then carry over into there. And the reason we're getting that error message is because I am not a millwright for my trade. So I won't be able to post time against it because we're restricting that inside of our system to be able to drive who and what can post to this based upon their permissions and their accessibility inside of the system. So a lot of great capabilities then from a work order perspective that we have in Dynamics that allows you to, to get more granular, obviously, on your processing inside of here. 